When you get into higher mathematics, you might see a professor write something like this on a board, where this is R with this extra backbone right over here, and maybe they write R2. Or if you're looking at it in a book, it might just be a bolded capital R with a 2 superscript like this. And if you see this, they're referring to the two-dimensional real coordinate space. Real coordinate space, which sounds very fancy. Real coordinate space. But one way to think about it, it's really just the two-dimensional space that you're used to dealing with in your coordinate plane. To go a little bit more abstract, this isn't necessarily this visual representation. This visual representation is one way to think about this real coordinate space. If we were to think about it a little bit more abstractly, the real R2, the real, the two-dimensional real coordinate space, let me write this down. So, and the two, the two-dimensional dimensional real coordinate space. And just to break down the notation, the two tells us how many dimensions we're dealing with, and then the r tells us this is a real coordinate space. The two dimensional real coordinate space is all the possible real valued two tuples. So let me write that down. This is all possible, all possible, real valued, real valued, two tuples. So what is a two tuple? Well, a tuple, a tuple is an ordered list of numbers. And since we're talking about real values, it's going to be an ordered list of real numbers. And a two tuple just says it's an ordered list of two numbers. So this is an ordered list of two real valued numbers. Well, that's what exactly what we did here when we thought about a two-dimensional vector. This right over here is a two tuple, and this is a real value two tuple. Neither of these have any imaginary parts. So you have a three and a four. Order matters. We view this as a different two tuple than say, than say four three. Four three. And even if we were to try to represent them in in our in our axes right over here, this vector, four three, would be four along the horizontal axis, and then three, and then three along the vertical axis. And so it would look something like this. And remember, we don't have to draw it just over there. We just care about its magnitude and direction. We could draw it, we could draw it right over here. That this would also be, this would also be four three, the column vector four three. So when we're talking about R2, we're talking about all of the possible real value two tuples. So all of the possible all the possible vectors that you can have where each of its components, and the components are these numbers right over here, where each of its components are a real number. So you might have three, four, you could have negative three, negative four, so that'd be one, two, three, one, two, three, four might look something like I haven't actually I should make the scale a little bit bigger than that so it looks the same. One, two, three, four. So it might look something something like that. So that would be the vector. Negative three. Let me write a little bit better than that. Negative three and negative four. So if you were to take all of the possible two tuples, including the vector 0, 0, so it has no magnitude, and you could debate what its direction is right over there, you take all of those combined, and then you have created your two-dimensional real coordinate space. And that is referred to as R2. Now, as you can imagine, the fact that we wrote this 2 here, we had to specify, you're just like, hey, well, can I put a 3 there? And I would say, absolutely, you could put a 3 there. So R3 would be the three-dimensional real coordinate space. So 3D real coordinate coordinate space. And so you would view this as all the possible real valued three tuples. So real valued three tuples. So for example, for example, that would be a member of R3. And let me, let me actually label these vectors just so we get in the habit of it. So let's say this vector, we call this vector x. Let's say we have a vector b that looks like this, negative 1, 5, 3. Both of these would be members of R3. And if you want to see some fancy notation, a member of a set, so this is a member, this is a member of R3. It is a real valued three tuple. Now you say, well, what would not be a member of R3? Well, this right over here isn't a three tuple. This right over here is a member of 
are two. Now you might be able to extend it in some way, add a zero or something, but formally this is not a three tuple. Another thing that would not be a member of R3, let's say someone wanted to make some type of some type of vector that had some imaginary parts in it. So let's say it had i, zero, one. This is no longer real valued. We have put we have put an imaginary this this number up here has an imaginary part. So this is no longer a real valued three tuple. And what's neat about linear algebra is we don't have to stop there. R3 we can visualize. We can plot these things. We've, we've already, probably in your, in your previous mathematical career, especially if you have some type of a hologram or something, it's not hard to visualize things in three dimensions. But what's neat is that we can keep extending this. We can go into four, five, six, seven, 20, 100 dimensions. And obviously there it becomes much harder, if not impossible, to visualize it. But then we, 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 we can at least represent it mathematically with a, with a n tuple of vectors. And so if we were to talk about a real coordinate space generally, you'll often see the notation r n, with n as a superscript. So this right over here is an n dimensional, n dimensional real coordinate space. Real coordinate, real coordinate space.